With the February 18th update to TF2, lost in the shuffle of a lot of crazy news, including the 2013 SDK updating with TF2, the new bicubic shadow filtering, fancy new fog options, and a pile of other goodies, there is a line stating added support for Steam networking. This single change unleashed a wave of confusion as mappers and players alike loaded up what they thought would be a single player map, only to be invaded by a random creep, climbing all up in their business, harassing their maps, fondling their Rock 005s. So this quick tip video is going to cover what is going on, how you can prevent this from happening to you, or even how you can leverage this new feature to your advantage and get your friends and or strange weirdos running around your map with you in seconds. First, the most important thing to know is that this feature is on by default. This means that loading up a map in TF2, whether it's through the create server window, typing map in your map's file name in the console, or even coming straight out of Hammer on a freshly compiled test build, that not only is it possible for your friends who can see you on their friends list join, but even random strangers, because, get this, you are now visible on the community server browser window. This is because now when you load up a map, by default, Steam is creating a server for you and hosting it. You can see that you have a ping when you start it up, despite it historically being a locally hosted thing for you only. So. This can be very useful, which I'll get into more later in this video, but if it's not intended, it can be quite jarring to be standing in a test map, and suddenly you're staring into the soulless eyes of a strange pyro that does not belong. Now obviously, this can be a problem, and if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you want to stop it from happening. So, you can use the Create Server button and uncheck Use Steam Networking every time you want to load up a map, but that's kind of cumbersome, and if you're coming straight from a map compile, you're going to bypass that anyway, so let's streamline the process. If you'd like to turn it off for good, simply navigate your file explorer to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Team Fortress 2, TF, CFG. You're looking for a file here called AutoExec. If there is one already here, open it up and go on to the next step. If there isn't, right click and go to New, Text Document, and type in AutoExec, and then replace .txt with .cfg. If you don't see the extension, you might need to turn that feature on with Windows, but don't worry, it's just a checkbox up here. After changing the file name, you'll likely get a pop-up warning you about the file potentially becoming unusable, but it's fine, just hit yes. Then you'll want to open this config file up in your text editor of choice. You may need to associate a file type with Notepad to do so, but personally, I'm already set up to do this with Notepad++. Now, in your text editor, you'll want to enter in sv underscore use underscore steam underscore networking zero. If you've already got a bunch of stuff in your auto exec, just slap it in somewhere at the end. Hit save and that's it. Now when you load up a map, you won't have any weirdos jumping in causing mischief while you ogle your loadout. If you ever want to revert this change so people can join, simply remove the command from your auto exec and save it again. Now, let's say you're the weirdo, and you actually want people running around with you for whatever creepy messed up reason you have. If you'd like to limit it to just people you know joining, you can automatically password your server by again going to your auto exec file, making sure you don't have the previous command turning it off of course, and adding in sv password uh, whatever you want your password to be. Save that, and now when you load up the map, players can only join if they have your password. Keep in mind that your server will still show up on the server browser as before. An important thing to know here though is that players can easily load up on a map that's already in the game, but if you want those players to join in on you on a custom map that isn't, you'll need to do some extra steps. First, players can download a map from you directly by loading into the server, provided it's under 16 megabytes. However, I've been told that the download speed is very slow, so this might not be the best option. You can also raise that limit to a max of 64 megabytes by adding in net underscore max file size 64 to your auto exec right under where you put your password, but again, it's gonna be slow. Personally, I recommend passing the map BSP over through some other means, Discord, email, Google Drive, whatever you use. It's going to be much faster and it just requires a couple extra steps on their end, throwing it into their map folder after you send it. But I think that about covers it. I know a lot of people have been recently surprised by people joining them on quick map loads, but it's also been a running issue of it being challenging to host a quick runaround with your friends. So I think this new feature is going to be a big benefit to mappers and players alike, provided they know how to handle it. Thanks to all of these not creeps and weirdos such as Agent Maxwell, Allison, and Boston Austin, as well as everyone else shown here for subscribing to me on Patreon, where you can see some behind the scenes early glimpses of mapping projects I'm working on before I publicly announce them, as well as other various Discord perks. The lowest tier is only $1, and everyone who joins helps me justify dividing up my time to do these videos just a little bit more. Thanks to everybody who's already signed up, everyone who's going to check it out, and you for just watching this, even if you didn't sign up. It's cool. I, I understand. Bye!